Wood, wood. Welcome back guys. We're Ian and Anna and we're van lifers who have been living in our small Ford Transit Connect for a while now. A large portion of that time was spent out west on our four month road trip. So in this video, we're very pumped to share with you our favorite hikes that we did. If you guys have any other recommendations, please put them in the comments below. We cannot wait to check out more trails across this beautiful country. And we are actually heading on our next road trip in a week's time. It's a secret. We're gonna tell you in our next video. So get excited for that. Also, we're coming out with our USA road trip travel guide on May 17th. It's coming and that's going to give you all the best free campsites, hiking trails, places that are secret. Probably click on it right up here. Before we jump into the video, I quickly want to remind you to always stay on trail. Please throw your trash away. Don't litter. Treat the earth as, as it deserves to be treated so we can all keep hiking. Please be respectful when you go out there and travel this summer or whenever you do. But let's jump in the video at number 10, Tamanawas Falls Trail. Located in the heart of Mount Hood, Oregon, Tamanawas Falls is a great way to start your morning. We suggest starting as close to sunrise as possible because this trail will get packed, especially during weekends. We went on a Saturday and had this place all to ourselves for around 30 minutes, which was amazing. Quick disclaimer, you need a recreation pass to do this and many other hikes in the Mount Hood area. Make sure to print one out online or head into town to purchase one for $5. To start this hike, you will pass right by the East Fork of the Hood River, then you'll walk through thick forest as you're surrounded by massive Douglas fir trees, which is the state tree of Oregon, by the way. You will pass over a log bridge, listen to the sound of the river running along the trail, and appreciate the morning dew. One spot that gets tricky is the boulder field that comes out of nowhere. It can be quite slippery, so watch your footing, but here you can look up and see breathtaking boulders and volcanic rock cliff faces. A short walk will then lead you directly to the base of the massive 110-foot Tamanawas Falls as the water crashes with force over the mossy rocks below. Now, this is where it gets really slippery, but if you move with caution, you can get really close or even make your way directly behind the waterfall, which was unforgettable. Anna got completely soaked, and because we started early in the morning, the temperature was only around 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's just say Anna was quite the trooper for the footage. Tamanawas Falls is just an unforgettable morning spent in Mount Hood. Now, it's time for number nine, Cleetwood Cove Trail. Crater Lake is the deepest lake in America. How how cool is that? It was formed by a massive volcanic eruption over 7,000 years ago. Although it's illegal to swim in most of the lake, there is one spot where it's allowed and the Cleetwood Cove Trail will lead you there. It is a two mile round trip hike full of many switchbacks. The path is sandy and once you get down, you are greeted with not only the best view from the bottom of the crater, but also a place to swim and cliff jump. We love to cliff jump, so of course this was one of our favorite trails. If you're one to get nervous about cliff jumping, remember this is maybe one of the safest places to do it because the lake is 1,949 feet deep. So you are sure to hit nothing but water. Speaking of water, it is cold. <laughs> In the summertime, the water temperature is between 55 to 60 degrees. So please be prepared for that. Up next is number eight, Delicate Arch. This park has more than 2,000 arches and the Delicate Arch is the most famous. It's so iconic that it's on the Utah line license plate. The only real tip for this hike is to start around 5 a.m. and arrive at the arch before the sun rises. Just make sure you have a downloaded map because you will probably get lost in the dark like we did. After you hike 1.6 miles, the sun will slowly creep up to reveal one of the most unique landscapes in the U.S. Here, you are mesmerized by the largest freestanding arch in the park, which is 46 feet tall and 32 feet wide. What makes this spot extra special is that it feels like you're in a coliseum and the arch is your arena. Make sure to explore the surrounding area because there are so many unforgettable views. As you make your way back to your car, the 1.6 miles you hiked in the dark will now be fully lit. Now you'll see exactly what you traversed in the dark, which was kind of mind blowing to Anna and I. Up next is number seven, Fire Wave Trail. Sometimes the best hikes are the ones you don't have to work too hard for and you still have a great reward at the end. If you have a disability, have kids, or aren't a big hiker, Fire Wave Trail in Valley of Fire State Park is one of the best trails for you. It's a flat 1.5 mile round trip stroll through incredible fiery red sandstone rock. 
works. There is one boulder that is so massive and mesmerizing, I can't even describe it. I don't know why, I just couldn't find the words. I almost enjoyed viewing it more than the fire wave. Nonetheless, the fire wave was still insane. To me, it looked like a candy cane swirl ice cream cone. Once you make it to the wave, you will be able to see a 360 degree view of the entire area and the varying colors of these rocks will simply blow your mind. There's a reason this park is becoming so popular. It is truly spectacular, guys. Moving on to number six, Corona Arch. I just talked about the delicate arch trail at number eight inside Arches National Park, but our all-time favorite hike in the area is called Bowtie and Corona Arch. It's five minutes away from the visitor center, but is not considered a part of the national park. That means two things. There won't be as many people there and you are able to drone. You know I love my drone shots, but if you didn't know, droning in all national parks in the US is illegal and comes with heavy fines. So yes, all the drone shots you see in our videos were taken outside national parks. The Corona Arch Trail will bring you inside a gigantic canyon and is only 2.4 miles round trip. We started our hike at 5 a.m. and arrived to this arch way before sun came up. We really couldn't believe our eyes as the sun rose because the arch here is absolutely massive. If you're asking yourself right now, hmm, this place looks familiar, well, it's probably because you've seen it before. It was here in 2012 where now famous YouTuber Devin Supertramp created the world's largest rope swing. Other than the Corona Arch, this spot also has the Bowtie Arch, which is a massive hole in the red rock and a spot in the cliff face that looks exactly like a human face with two eyes and a mouth. If you're extra lucky, a train will make its way through the canyon as you take in the miraculous views. If you're heading to the Moab or Arches area on your next road trip, please hit up this epic spot. I wanna cut in here real quick and introduce you to the sponsor of this video, Chirp Audiobooks, an audiobook deal site with millions of members. They discount audiobooks up to 95% off that readers can purchase and own with no subscription or membership fees. We are constantly on the road, traveling from one national park to the next, looking for the best hiking trails. And honestly, we only used to listen to music and it was super annoying after a little bit. I really love reading books, but you can't read and drive. So this is a great way to spend your time in the car. It makes the time fly by. This year in our business and for what we do, I've been really looking into organizational and time management skills because a lot of things are swamping us all the time. And I just got make time off of Chirp audiobooks and it was legit life changing. So please check that out. If you're feeling like you don't have enough time in your day, another book that we found on their featured deal section for only $4.99, I get to keep it for life. It's called You Are a Bad and it's a New York Times bestseller. Been recommended a bunch by people. I was happy to find it for that low price. If you're heading on a road trip soon or traveling, I highly recommend Chirp. There's gonna be a link down in the description below. We even have a little gift for you guys. You can use the code THEOTHERSIDE50 and get 50% off your first purchase. For now, let's head back into the video. Let's hit up number five, Yant Flats Trail. Yant Flats Trail, also known as Candy Cliffs, was one of the coolest hidden gems we've ever found during our two years of travel. Located in St. George, Utah, Yacht Trail is only an hour drive from Zion National Park. The reason we love this trail so much is because we were the only ones here. It made our experience so dang special. However, to be totally transparent with you guys, there's nothing easy about getting to this hike, and maybe that's the reason why it's not so popular. Before arriving to the trailhead, you'll need to drive on a gravel road for 30 minutes that is full of mountains. We weren't sure if our van could handle it, but it ended up being totally worth it. Once you arrive to the starting point, it's a sandy 3.5 mile round trip hike. Contrary to many hikes in Utah, you will be seeing lots of bushes and greenery on the trail rather than orange and red tones, which is a really nice switch up. Towards the end, the trail will open up to a truly impressive view of tons of candy cliffs and mountains. Be careful making your way down the cliffs. It can be a bit challenging, but luckily there are snake-like scales on the hills that provide you with a bit more stability. If you end up visiting Yacht Flats Trail, we hope you enjoy this miraculous place as much as we did. A little tip, we went at sunset and it was kind of hard getting back to our car in the dark, so make sure to have the proper gear you need to return safely. Coming up, number four, the Navajo Loop Trail. Located in Bryce Canyon National Park in Utah, this trail will always go down as one of our favorites. The best time to start this hike is either early in the morning before it gets hot or late in the day closer to sunset. We love this trail so much, we ended up doing it twice during sunrise and sunset and it was one of the biggest highlights 
highlights of our whole four month road trip. On this 1.5 mile loop trail, you will walk past Thor's Hammer and be surrounded by hundreds of white, orange, and red hoodoos that make Bryce Canyon so iconic. One of our favorite spots on the trail is this massive switchback section. The switchbacks here are no joke and can get very tiring, but we think majority of people will be fine. After the switchbacks, you will keep hiking until you arrive at Wall Street, which is an enormous slot canyon. Walking through here was just astonishing. We couldn't get over how all these mind-blowing views were all within a one and a half mile hike. It doesn't stop there though. Right after Wall Street are some more crazy switchbacks that lead to what looks like something out of Petra Jordan. This narrow switchback section is covered in bricks all the way up and really feels like a different country. As you make your way up these last few switchbacks, you even get to walk through a tiny hole in the rock. Best part about this hike is that it leads you directly to Sunset Point. This hike is by far the most bang for your buck when hiking in Bryce Canyon. Up next is number three, Black Elk Peak. The entrance to Black Elk Peak is located at Sylvan Lake in Custer State Park. This location may look familiar to you because it's in the popular film National Treasure Book of Secrets. That's the second one. That's kind of funny because in the moment I didn't really like Black Elk Peak that much. It was really hard for us, especially me, and I think that had something to do with the fact that this seven mile hike was the first one to kick off our four month road trip. We definitely were not used to this sort of thing yet, so something we learned is make sure to have snacks and lots of water, guys. You will surely need it. This trip takes you to the highest point in South Dakota and offers a breathtaking 360 view of the Black Hills. There's a historic fire tower at the top of the hill, which was one of my favorite parts. I thought it was so stunning and I kept calling it my castle on the hill. Like in the Ed Sheeran song, you know? <laughs> Anyways, along the trail, you can see wildflowers and berry bushes as well as these huge crystal rocks that jut up from the ground. They were spectacular. This spot is extremely wild and full of beautiful nature. Next is number two, Delta Lake. You can hike up to Delta Lake in Grand Teton National Park. This eight mile round trip hike is by far the hardest hike we have ever done. You will check up an elevation of 2,300 feet, make your way through tons of switchbacks and even hit three separate boulder fields. This hike is no joke and should be taken seriously. Not only should you bring food and tons of water, but you need bear spray. I'm telling you this because at the beginning of this trail, we stumbled upon a grizzly bear and her cubs. This was a terrifying moment, but we were thankful to have bear spray with us, which is basically pepper spray. You could rent bear spray for 24 hours and it's $8, or you can buy your own for around $50. If you end up stumbling upon a bear, please stay calm and do not run. The Delta Lake hike can take upwards of seven to nine hours, especially with the time you'll want to spend at the top. Throughout, we made tons of pit stops for food and water, but also took in spectacular views the whole time. There will be a section of this hike where there will be a lot of long switchbacks. And from here, you'll be able to see awesome views of Taggart Lake and the surrounding forests and plains. This is very important. As you start the switchbacks, make sure you count because at the end of switchback number six, there is a veer off point to the unmarked trail to Delta Lake. When you continue on this unmarked section of the hike, you will hit three separate grueling boulder fields. We did slip a couple times here, even with hiking boots, so please be careful and take your time. Just make sure to bear right when climbing up the boulder fields, as that is where the trail will reappear. After those nasty boulder fields, you have another massive steep hill called Glacier Gulch, to climb before reaching the magnificent Delta Lake. As you arrive at Delta Lake, you are presented with some of the bluest water in the US and an extraordinary view of the Teton Mountain Peak. Taking in the views here was well worth the intense climb up, I promise. Anna and I even jumped in at the top, but please do this at your own risk. The magical blue water you see is glacier runoff, which means it is freezing and can cause hypothermia or shock. Anna also cut up her foot pretty bad when she jumped because it wasn't that deep. Just imagine hiking down four miles when you are freezing cold and hurt. Not fun. Now it's time for number one, Angel's Landing. For adventure seekers and adrenaline junkies, this is the perfect hike to put on your bucket list. Now before we get into it, I want to say that Angel's Landing is pretty dangerous and many people have died attempting to climb here. So please proceed with caution and if you're not good with heights, maybe don't try to go all the way to the top. You know, safety first guys. But anyways, despite the dangers, Angel's Landing is one of the most most popular hikes in Zion National Park, and it's no more for the journey than it is the destination. Being a 5.4 mile trek, Angel's Landing is difficult. The first portion is uphill and very tiring. At one point, you climb up 21 switchbacks. Not a switchback fan over here, let me tell you. Although challenging, the views along the way are endless. It is overwhelming how beautiful this place is. Once you 
have conquered the 21 switchbacks, you will reach Scout Overlook. This is actually where many people stop because it's here that the real fun begins. The first part of this portion to Angel's Landing isn't too dangerous. It's actually a really good spot to practice what's to come. I personally thought that that was it because it's where this chain started, so I got confused and was like, oh my gosh, that was easy. Then I realized we had to climb to the peak to reach Angel's Landing. The next part is totally sketchy. The path narrows and there is a huge drop on both sides of you. Your only protection is a chain to hang on to. But Ian and I were both very careful and felt confident the more we kept going. Let me tell you, when we overcame that narrow trail and finally reached the insane lookout at the peak of the mountain, we felt unstoppable. It is a feeling like no other. I am here to tell you guys, if you hike this hike, I am extremely proud of you and it is a huge accomplishment. The last thing I want to mention is that it can be very scary when there are a lot of people on this trail because it's so narrow. So make sure to get there as early as possible and you will have the best time of your life. But of course, be safe. All right, guys, that's a wrap for this video. If you got any value from it, please subscribe, comment down below what you thought and like it. And as always, follow us on Instagram. Make sure to keep an eye out for that travel guide coming soon too. We cannot wait to bring you on our upcoming travels. Can't wait to tell you in our next video. We will see you in the next one. Whoop, whoop, yip, yip, riba, riba, riba. Thank <laughs> you.